A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 18. Dismantling the engine completely to remove all traces of oil ready for painting using a tub of cellulose thinners. I keep it away from the silicone piston ring which could be damaged. The flywheel needed some more fettling and finally it is ready for paint. Here's a shot of the engine before I took it apart and I think you will agree that the inlet and exhaust pipes match each other quite well. A quick run before I dismantle it just in case it doesn't go back together properly. I didn't notice this until I saw this video clip the gudgeon pin is working loose. Note to self, when I finally fit this, I will need to use some nut lock in this area to hold the gudgeon pin firmly in place. You may also notice in this clip that I've shortened the crankshaft at the flywheel end and it looks a lot better. Here we go then, it's dismantling time and this is exactly the opposite of assembly. I'm using the socket on the end of a socket screwdriver to remove all the 7BA nuts. Here's a close-up of the gudgeon pin and you can see how loose it was. I'm just tightening this so it doesn't fall out. The next thing to go is the pin that holds the eccentric rod to the valve fork. I'm putting all these small parts in the cardboard box. Here's the cylinder complete with this gasket. I'm going to leave the gasket in place. It won't be attacked by the cellulose thinners and it's fine. And here, once again, I'm removing the 7BA nuts that hold the steam chest cover in place. I will need to make some new gaskets for this because the gaskets that I showed me making in the previous episode didn't quite work out as I planned. When I trimmed the external part of the gasket with the Stanley knife, it seemed to get a lot smaller. It's easy enough to make a couple more. I won't bother showing this because I have shown it previously. This clip shows me using my trusty barcode spanner to slacken off the exhaust pipe underneath. I fitted the adapter union using some thread lock into the main casting. So it was the elbow that came away from that rather than the entire assembly coming out of the engine. Time now, using once again the circlet pliers, I remove the piston. I need to do it for two reasons. One is to release it from the crosshead and I don't want the cellulose thinners that I'm about to use to contact the piston ring because it may damage the silicone rubber piston ring. Now I can easily remove the gland plate and I'm going to have a quick look at the gland. I don't think it's tight enough. I tried the piston back in it and tightened it up. But there was a slight problem with it. Where the thread meets the main shaft was a little bit rough and I'm removing the burr using a needle file. In this clip I'm slackening off the grub screw using a 1 16th Imperial Allen key. I put the copper washer in the cardboard box so I don't lose it. I don't need to fully dismantle the crankshaft, the eccentric can stay in place. I just need to remove the stud bolts and I should be able to withdraw the entire assembly in one go. Pretty much like this. The gunmetal parts don't need painting, I will give them a clean in the cellulose thinners to get rid of any oil residue. Now it's time to remove the sole plate from the box bed. This is held to the box bed using four stud bolts as you can see here and at the other end two long 7BA studs that I've already removed the nuts from. As you can see there's quite a lot of oil all over the sole plate and the box bed so I'm wiping the thick of it off with a cloth. Here are all the parts on the bench including the cardboard box and what I need to do now is part fill this food container with some cellulose thinners. I've mentioned this many times before, cellulose thinners is also known as lacquer thinner in the USA. Health and safety warning, try not to get too much of this on your fingers, preferably wear a pair of gloves, which I never do, and also work in a very well-ventilated area. That's basically why I use a sealable food container, because when I finish doing this, I will put the lid on the food container. That way I won't be able to smell cellulose thinners throughout the house, because I'm in the workshop next to the kitchen. This cellulose thinners should be clear, but it isn't because I've used it before, mainly from cleaning paintbrushes when it was still in the tin. It's really important to get rid of any oil or grease on these parts before you start the painting process. As you can see, it's quite a thorough job, and I go over the part two or three times with the paintbrush. It took a while, but all of the parts became very clean, 
and all of the lubricating oil that previously covered these parts was removed completely. I've removed the grub screw from the flywheel because I'm going to do some more work on the flywheel. I cleaned it up with a needle file and a grinder and all sorts of things, but it still wasn't how I wanted it to be, so here I'm using a fine grinder and going over all the parts again. You can see where I'm having to remove the casting sprue, not just from the edges of the spokes, but from all the way around the edge. This took a while, but finally it was looking a lot better, and the next part of the job is to put it back into the cellulose thinners just to remove all the particles of cast iron from the grinding process. This is the crankshaft assembly after I took it out of the thinners. It's now squeaky clean. Note to self, I must remember to lubricate this when I fit it back to the engine. Here are all the parts on the bench ready for painting. I will do this in the next episode because I need to go up to the workshop to find some suitable paint. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.